What I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to adjust exposure to a photo in a more advanced way. Um, there's a couple things that you're going to need in order to really take advantage of the capabilities of this. First things first, you're going to have to have a raw shooting camera. Um, the typical stigma associated with a raw shooting camera is that you have to spend thousands of dollars to get a camera that can, you know, output in this format. That's not true at all. In fact, you can actually get a point and shoot camera similar to the one you may or may not already be using and pay almost the same, right around the same amount of money that you already spent on your current camera and uh, get yourself a camera that can shoot in raw. And I actually have already created a list of these cameras uh, online. So if you check a link, there's a link below that I have that, ha um, that has a list of these affordable raw shooting cameras. So check that out and uh, see if any of those will work for you. Also, if you need more information about why raw is so beneficial, uh, after you're done watching this video and you see what it can do, also take a second to check out the um, blog post I wrote on the topic called The Benefits of Shooting in Raw. That will also be linked below. You're also going to need to get the free open source program called UF Raw. What this program will do is it will open the raw photo and it'll let you make adjustments to the exposure and stuff like that. Now, after you make these adjustments with UF Raw, you can then spit it out and send it over to GIMP in a JPEG format and convert it and uh, make further tweaks to it as necessary. Uh, in this case, as you can see, we have spots of the photo, the underside of these rocks are way underexposed and you, there's just no information at all. Now if we were uh, using a J, if this was a JPEG image and not a raw image, that information would be gone. There's no photo program, photo editing program or anything out there that will ever really give you that data back. But since I shot this photo in raw, if I adjust this curve up, you'll see <laughs> just like that, all of that data is still there. All that data was stored in the raw format of the photo. And that's because this is an uncompressed format that keeps all of that information. So there's a lot of power in this. Now the only problem with that is if I adjust that curve way high, everything else gets washed out and is way overexposed. So you still need to use GIMP in combination with this extra functionality of UF RAW to really uh, make the most out of it. And what I mean by that is uh, HDR uses a, uh, a set of tools that will take three different versions of a photo. One, you know, overexposed, one underexposed, and one in a normal exposure. And it'll combine those photos together and in such a way to where they will, you'll be able to have all of the information uh, stored in the photo for a best case scenario. Now you've probably seen some other versions of some HDR photos that have much more extreme versions of what I just described to you and that you've got some really really funky looking results. Now this is a more practical look on uh, HDR like methods but it's still very powerful and it'll still really help produce some better results. Now if you wanted to do all of those um, crazy kind of otherworldly effects by all means you can do it with this effect and do it with this set of tools but that's going to be another lesson in itself so the first thing we want to do is we want to adjust the exposure up like so in UF RAW and all I did was I switched over to my curve tab here my base curve tab and I adjusted this upward this is similar to the curves tool in GIMP if you're familiar with that now, you'll see here, like I said, the stream and everything else is very overexposed, but the rocks and everything else are exposed quite well. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Wilbur in the bottom right-hand corner here and send the image to GIMP. Now, what's going to happen is GIMP is going to open this image up as a JPEG. Now, all we have to do is open that raw file back up with UF raw and turn the curves down to where the stream and the sky are exposed properly. We're ignoring the rocks altogether this time. And we'll just simply click on GIMP, the uh, GIMP icon of uh, Wilbur in the corner, let it convert over to a JPEG, and now we have two different versions of the same photo open. 
Um, one of them has a much better exposure of the rocks. One of them has a much better exposure of the stream and the sky. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click Select All on either image. Now click Edit, Copy. Switch over to the other GIMP um, image. Click Edit, Paste. Right click on our floating la uh, selection and click New Layer. Now just adjust the size so that it looks a little neater. And now you'll see that there are two versions of this image. One with the exposed stream and the other one with the exposed rocks. So now what we're going to do is we're going to isolate different portions of this photo, the top version of the photo, so that the only parts that are actually showing on this version are the rocks. We don't want to see the overexposed stream and stuff. We want to see the stuff that's below it. So to do that, we're going to use something called layer masks. Now, if you're not familiar with layer masks, there's a link below that will teach you all about them and give you a lot more information about them than I'm going to give you in this lesson. But just for a general understanding, if you right click on this and you click add layer mask and set it to white full opacity, what you're going to get is you're going to get a white image that runs parallel to your normal image. And whenever you fill anything black in on this layer mask, what it does is it makes those portions, anything black, transparent. Anything white is not transparent. So what this will do for us is we can now fill in transparent in the center. And what that will do is that will expose, only show the underside, the under the layer underneath instead of the top layer below. Oops. So as you can see, roughly speaking, we can quickly and easily just paint the color black on our layer mask and really just kind of get that detail of that, you know, better exposed uh, stream and sky like that. So that's the essence of what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a little bit of an easier way to do it than using the brush tool like that. What I would have done is I'm going to click on my free select tool and I'm just going to simply select my stones here. and uh, work around it and just get the stream and the sky selected. So now with the bucket tool we will fill this in with black. And again we're working on the layer mask here so that worked that added transparency through so that you can see the stream and the sky properly. The only problem is whenever we do that you're gonna get that really hard edge all around on your image and that doesn't look very good. So let's zoom to extents, click on our brush tool and switch over to white and use a big soft brush and just kind of, with short brush strokes, massage those edges, like so. Just kind of work all that extra stuff off. And if you go too far by accident, you just hit Control-Z to undo, or you can also just hit X to switch back to black and paint it back again as black. But that's that's pretty much it. That's that's a more practical way to use HDR to your advantage to really create some uh, much better exposures for some of your images. I hope this helps and if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything like that do not hesitate to leave me a comment in the comment section below. Also uh, one other thing I want to point out is if you look over to the right if you're on my website look over to the right and you'll see there is a uh, opportunity to get your hands on a free copy of my Principles of Photo Editing ebook. This is a very short book, five or six pages long, that just explains um, what good habits you should be getting into if you're going to get into photo editing. Also, if you subscribe to that email, you're going to get five free lessons that are exclusive only to my email subscribers. And it also opens up a uh, open bridge of personal communication directly between you and me where you can send me files and you can send me pictures and ask me direct questions and I will be able to answer your questions and help you in a much better way than I can through my blog. So check that out and um, hope you guys liked the tutorial and I hope it helped.